Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a chopper flying into a Middle Eastern complex. Four men seize and bind a terrorist leader to a chair. Harry Hart, codename Galahad, threatens to shoot the terrorist, unless he answers his questions. The terrorist raises his head, exposing a grenade pin in his mouth. Lee, Harry's comrade leaps on the terrorist, and covers the explosion, sacrificing himself for the sake of his teammates. Merlin and Lancelot, Harry's other two partners, take off their masks. Harry accepts Lancelot into the Kingsman Agency, acknowledging Lee's sacrifice. Harry pays Michelle, Lee's wife a visit, to inform her of her husband's death. He offers her a valor medal in Lee's honor, with a number on the back, in case she needs a favor, and asks to say Oxford's not brogues to let him know it's her. Michelle declines the award. Harry then approaches Lee's young son, Gary Eggsy, and presents him with the medal. Moving to Argentina, 17 years later, Professor James Arnold is being held captive by a gang of criminals. There's a knock on the door. One of the thugs answers it, and discovers Lancelot. He shoots the thug, and then fights and kills the rest of the goons, before taking a drink. Another knock is soon heard at the door. Lancelot goes to respond, but is slashed down the middle by Gazelle, a lady with bladed prosthetic legs. She greets her boss, billionaire Richmond Valentine at the door. Valentine and Gazelle liberate Arnold and accompany him. Harry returns to London, and sees a tailor shop that serves as a cover for the Secret Service Kingsman headquarters. Kingsman is a private intelligence organization, created by members of the British nobility, who lost heirs in World War I. There he meets Merlin and their superior, Arthur, his boss. They mourn Lancelot's death, and suspect that those responsible had ties to the catastrophes in Uganda and Chechnya. Returning to Eggsy, who is now in his early 20s. He shares a home with his mother and her new husband, Dean, as well as Eggsy's baby sister. They live in a rundown flat, and are in financial difficulty. Eggsy and his two buddies travel to the pub, when they notice Dean's gang nearby. They approach Eggsy's table, and threaten to kick him out of the pub. He departs, but not before obtaining one of the goon's car keys. He and his pals get into their car and begin executing antics. When the owner of the car approaches the pub, they drive away, only to collide with the cops. Eggsy reverses down a few blocks, until he collides with another vehicle. He instructs his companions to leave, and says that he will handle the problem on his own. He then drives directly into the police car. Next, we learn that Eggsy has been arrested. The police officer threatens him with 18 months in prison, if he refuses to give his friend's identification. After the officer has left, he takes out his heroism medal, and dials the number on the back. Eggsy recalls the words, Oxford's not brogues, but the woman on the other end tells him he dialed the wrong number. Later, Harry comes to his aid. He brings him to a local tavern, where Dean's men confront and threaten Eggsy. Harry asks them to leave, but the thug's commander is impolite. They label him a grandfather, which enrages him. Manners maketh man, Harry says, as he walks over to the front door and locks it. He takes a glass with the hook of his umbrella, and swings it at the thug, before promptly beating the rest of the thugs. His fighting moves and abilities even catch Eggsy off guard. Harry pats Eggsy on the shoulder and walks away, having him pledge not to tell anyone about him or what he's just witnessed. Dean confronts Eggsy about what he did to his friend's car, when he returns home. Michelle tries to help Eggsy, but is pushed out of the way. Harry listens to the pandemonium, through a microphone he placed on Eggsy's shoulder. Harry reminds Dean that if he does not let Eggsy free, he will report Dean's many transgressions to the police, with proof. He also requests that Eggsy meet him at the tailor he specified earlier. Dean lets Eggsy leave the apartment hearing this. Eggsy goes to the tailor, and meets Harry, who advises him to work for the Kingsman, like his father. He accepts his offer, and they fly underground to a secret location, to meet the other recruits aboard a shuttle. A girl named Roxy befriends Eggsy, while Charlie and his friends mock him. Following that, Harry encounters Professor Arnold, who has been released by his kidnappers. He confronts the professor about the prior kidnapping. Arnold screams in anguish, as his head bursts, splattering on Harry's face. When two thugs break into the building, Harry is forced to throw a hand grenade out the window. He falls into a coma, after getting somewhat caught in the explosion. When Valentine learns of Arnold's death, he tries to go into it and find out who is looking into their case. The chamber begins to fill with water, while the new recruits sleep at night. Except for Eggsy, everyone reaches for the toilet pipes, to obtain some fresh air. Eggsy tries but fails to open the exit door. Following that, he swims towards a glass enclosure, and begins smashing it with his fist, until it breaks and the water spills into the other chamber. Merlin can be seen watching them from there. 
He commends Eggsy's efforts, but alleges they failed to work together, culminating in the death of one of their friends, Amelia. Next, Valentine and Gazelle are having dinner with the Scandinavian Princess Tilda and the Scandinavian Prime Minister. Valentine informs them of his plan to combat climate change. He is supported by the Prime Minister, but Tilda believes he is nuts, and walks away, and summons the guards. However, she is kidnapped by Gazelle, who subsequently murders the guards with her prosthetic legs. Back to the recruits, they are expected to personally train a puppy provided to each of them, as part of their training. Eggsy is forced to live with a little pug, who ignores his commands. They become closer over time, and he begins to refer to it as JB. Merlin and Eggsy find, after Harry's recuperation, that Arnold had a chip implanted in his neck, causing his head to explode. The scar beneath Arnold's ear was also shared by the Scandinavian Prime Minister. Merlin suspects Valentine is behind all this. Eggsy plays a video of Valentine's most recent event, in which he pledged to give away free SIM cards all around the world. He is also suspected of kidnapping several world leaders and celebrities. Harry goes undercover at Valentine's estate, to learn more about his ambitions. The two eat at McDonald's, and talk about their love of James Bond movies, but Harry doesn't learn much, except that one of Valentine's assistants is carrying a flyer for a hate group church in Kentucky. Next, we see Eggsy Roxy Charlie, and three of Charlie's friends as the last recruits. Their next assignment will require them to jump out of a plane, and land in a circle on the ground. Merlin tells them after they jump to figure out what to do, if one of their competitors does not have a parachute. One recruit freaks out, and opens his chute too soon. Eggsy takes the lead and as everyone hold hands, until just he and Roxy are left to pull their parachutes. They pull Roxy's chute from 300 feet in the air. The recruits who land on the circle are Eggsy Roxy and Charlie, while the rest are eliminated. Eggsy meets Harry in the Kingsman Taylor shop, and leads him into a room full of weaponry, including a hand grenade disguised as a lighter, a pen that releases a poison, and a pair of shoes with a poison-tipped blade. The weapons are constructed so no ordinary person would suspect them. They then find Valentine and Gazelle, waiting for them in the lounge. Valentine is wearing one of the costumes from the boutique. Eggsy Roxy and Charlie are assigned to a nightclub, to converse and get a young girl to fall in love with them. They pass out while talking to the girl, their drinks had been spiked. When Eggsy wakes up, he is tethered to the train rails. One interrogator tries to persuade Eggsy to disclose information about the Kingsman and Harry, but he refuses, despite the impending train. He is saved when he gets dragged beneath the track, and the train runs over him. When Harry returns, he is told that he and Roxy passed the exam, but Charlie did not, and has been returned home. Eggsy and Roxy's final set of assignments is to shoot their pet dogs. Although Eggsy attempts, but fails to shoot at his pug, a gunshot is heard from Roxy's interrogation chamber. Eggsy is sent home by Arthur for failing to complete his given duty. Disappointed, Eggsy drives back to his house in Arthur's car, but the car delivers him straight to Harry's. Harry shows his displeasure with Eggsy for failing his test, and reveals that the pistol was empty. He also admits that Amelia did not drown, and is a member of the Berlin Kingsman. Meanwhile, Roxy is hired as an agent for Kingsman. Harry heads to Kentucky to investigate a suspicious gathering of individuals at a church, after receiving a call from Merlin. Meanwhile, Valentine and Gazelle can be spotted a few thousand feet away, ready to activate the signal on the churchgoers, who have Valentine's SIM cards. Everyone, including Harry, becomes outraged when the signal goes live, and begins attacking one another. Harry stabs Wax Impales, and blasts up everybody who dares to attack him, until he is the only person left in the chapel. From their respective positions, Eggsy Merlin and Arthur keep a watch on everything. Valentine and Gazelle meet Harry outside the church. According to Valentine, people who have the SIM card signal implanted become hostile. He then pulls out a revolver, and fatally shoots Harry in the head. In terror, Eggsy yells aloud. For a meeting, he returns to Arthur's tailor business. He recounts Harry's recording of Valentine's confession, and pours a drink in his honor. When he finds Arthur's implant scar beneath his ear, it's evident that Arthur has also joined Valentine's side, whose main goal is to utilize his SIM cards to commit mass genocide, murder the majority of the world's population, and end climate change. He considers humanity to be a virus on the planet, and believes that eradicating it would be beneficial and better for the future. Arthur raises a glass to Harry, and takes a drink with Eggsy. After some time, Arthur takes out his pen to activate the poison he put in Eggsy's drink, only to die himself. We see Eggsy switch the drinks, drawing Arthur's attention away from the paintings on the wall. With the new information, Eggsy runs to Merlin and Roxy, and the three of them set out to thwart Valentine's plans. 
Roxy is launched into space, with two enormous balloons, to attack one of Valentine's satellites. Valentine's offices are invaded by Merlin and Eggsy, as he throws a party for everyone involved in his operation. Eggsy takes advantage of Arthur's offer, and impersonates him, in order to gain admittance. He walks past a jail holding Princess Tilda, and asks whether she'll kiss him, if he saves the world. She agrees to do even more, if he is successful. Elsewhere, Roxy reaches the satellite, but due to her high altitude, one of her balloons is already ruptured. She does however manage to launch the rocket, before the other balloon bursts, sending her crashing to the ground. She is eventually able to deploy her shot in time and land safely. Charlie arrives out of nowhere, holding a knife to Eggsy's throat, and the ring on his finger. He is electrocuted by Eggsy. While escaping and shooting through Valentine's goons, Eggsy dashes back to the jet. Meanwhile, the missile hits Valentine's satellite, delaying the signal's activation. Valentine, on the other hand, takes control of a nearby satellite, and activates the signal with a biometric scanner, which Merlin is unable to avoid. The signal is broadcast all across the world. People fight in London, Rio, and New York. Michelle is seen attempting to break into the restroom, in order to murder her daughter. After attempting to run back and stop Valentine, Eggsy is cornered by the shooters. Merlin activates the implants, causing everyone's heads to burst like fireworks, including the gunmen and world leaders. Eggsy returns to Valentine and Gazelle's place. He fires at them, yanking Valentine's hand away from the scanner, and cutting off the communication. Gazelle shatters the window, and tries to murder Eggsy. They fight each other, until Gazelle is hurt by Eggsy's venomous sneaker. He then yanks one of her legs from her body, and tosses it at Valentine's back, instantly killing him. As a result, all signals are permanently deactivated. After that, Merlin and Roxy congratulate Eggsy on saving the Earth. He then goes to Tilda's cell, with a bottle of champagne and, as she promised, enjoys an intimate moment with her. Michelle and Dean are seen at the tavern. Eggsy enters wearing a fine suit, and informs Michelle that his new position has given him numerous benefits, including a new home for her. Dean dispatches his thugs to torment Eggsy once more, as Eggsy comes to the front door and says, Manners maketh man, as Harry once said. He grabs an umbrella hook, and tosses a glass at Dean's face. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.